Hello, everyone, and welcome to this session. Greetings from SOAS and greetings from London to all of you. I'm Bhavana Dave. Uh, I'm the postgraduate tutor for Department of Politics and International Studies, and I teach about politics of Central Asia, uh, the postgraduate module in uh, geopolitics in Central Asia and the Caucasus region. I'm happy to share more information about SOAS with you and let you know how we teach politics and international relations. So I will talk for next four minutes or so and uh, introduce uh, our teaching to you, uh, the department to you, and then hand over to my colleagues who convene the various uh, master's uh, program and they will tell you more about this program. We should have about 25, 30 minutes uh, for question and answers from you. So, so please also have your questions ready. So now about the department, uh, you can see the snapshot of the people in the department. We might have maybe one or two people missing here, but that's uh, basically the most people here. Um, and why study at SOAS? There are a lot of places uh, where you, across the world where you can study politics, which teach about these areas and the discipline. So what is it that makes SOAS stand out and uh, have, uh, what is it that makes it have its distinctive niche? First of all, our focus is global. We have uh, academics with wide global networks who are engaged deeply with political realities in the global South. Uh, and their research and expertise continues to make significant contribution to research dissemination of knowledge and also formulation of policies. Second, we study these processes through non-Western lens. So you know that much knowledge production and analysis uh, in academic institutions and policymaking worldwide is still rooted in Western experience Western concepts, which are assumed to be the benchmark, the, the most authoritative ways of studying, studying these events. So we teach about how these ideas, concepts, ideologies, practices, which have emerged in Europe and have spread across the world and how they are also uh, continuously being challenged, interrogated, critiqued, and how alternative ways of understanding, analyzing, many of these burning issues are emerging. So thus we combine disciplinary knowledge with, with regional expertise. In this, we, uh, we also combine these disciplinary ideas, concepts and theories with extensive knowledge about the region, which is grounded in, in the field work that uh, various members of the department have carried out in the regions of their expertise. And this fieldwork is based on strong language skills, deep familiarity with cultures and societies in these region. So in a nutshell, what we combine is disciplinary knowledge, regional expertise, strong language skills, and in-depth uh, fieldwork. SOAS and the Department of Politics ranks fifth uh, in UK and seventh in Europe and 21st in the world in terms of the world, uh, the QS ratings of, of this year. And we also have the distinction of having uh, acquired the teaching excellence, the silver uh, teaching excellence framework rating, which means that we uh, do very well in terms of teaching, student satisfaction, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and providing and sharing our ideas and, and uh, providing uh, the, the best that, that we have to offer. Also, just a couple of words about the four very active centers which are based in the Department of Politics. So first one is the Center for International Studies and Diplomacy, CISD. Uh, you will also hear more about the CISD uh, uh, different programs uh, directed by Professor Dan Plesch. Second is the Center for Conflict Rights and Justice, uh, which, is, uh, which has co-directors Sutha Nadaraja, who currently is on research leave, 
and uh, we know Kanapati Pillai, who will be talking in a couple of minutes time. The Center of Comparative Political Thought, which is uh, directed by Professor Hagar uh, Kotev. And finally, the Center of Taiwan Studies by Dr. David Fell. Incidentally, Dr. David Fell is going to be taking over as postgraduate tutor in term two from me. So you may have uh, many of your inquiries directed uh, to him. So all students doing studying for masters also actively participate in the, uh, these activities, events organized by these centers and also benefit from interactions with the various members of the center. So the centers basically combine the various uh, expertise from different departments across SOAS. So now I will have my colleagues talk about uh, the different master's programs. Let's begin first with, I don't know, do we have Professor Chan here? Uh, he's probably still joining in. Why not I hand over to my colleague, uh, Dr. Vino Kanapati Pillai, who will talk about the conflict rights and justice program and then uh, Professor Chan will come in at a later point. Over to you, Vino. Thank you, Bhavna. Um, can we switch, slip ahead to slides yes. on it, if you don't mind? Sorry. Yes. One, yeah, perfect. Thank you. Um, so welcome, everybody, to today's presentation. Um, just as a quick thing, I don't know if Bhavna said, but this is being recorded. So if you have to step out at any point because your technology fails you, then feel free to just come back in again. And Rachel's monitoring the waiting room, so she'll just let you back in as we get started. So my name's Vino, as Bhavna's already said, and I co-convene the MSc in Conflicts, Rights and Justice. Um, the degree's teaching structure is there, and I want to say something about this because this degree is a little bit unusual in that um, for every degree, you have to do 180 credits worth of uh, learning. Uh, this one has 60 credits as compulsory credits, and I want to talk about that a little bit because it's one of the key points about this degree that separates it from many other degrees internationally that seek to work on these themes of conflict rights and justice. This degree is unique in combining a focus on all three subjects. So you have a module on conflicts, a module on rights, and a module on justice, all of which are compulsory. Now, it's a bit odd if you think about it that other degrees don't do all of these three because any one of these three is closely bound up with the other two. So this degree stands, stands apart for its holistic approach to the issues and themes that we care about. But because the degree is being taught at SOAS, after all, um, we place a particular emphasis on the perspectives from the global south. More generally, we take a critical approach to subjects such as human rights, international criminal justice, uh, development, uh, peace building, and so on. So the idea is not just training people technically to be involved in these fields, but to think critically about the ways in which they engage with these issues around the world. At the same time, however, we place a rigorous em emphasis on rigorous theoretical foundations, which is combined with engagement with current policy debates and advocacy dilemmas, which we think equips our graduates to go out into jobs and pre previous graduates have worked in the NGO sector, in, UN, in the UN, in human rights, development, media, and so on. So my third point that I want to make about the degree is that the lectures, the core subjects, bring together an enormous amount of field-based experience with knowledge of the key theoretical debates in their fields. As Bhavna said, this is something that we take great pride in, in the politics department as a whole, that we can bring together this vast amount of experience with, you know, with the theoretical academic knowledge, but also the practical policy-based knowledge, and the degree brings the two together. So you have an access to a wide variety of 
experienced personnel, experienced lecturers, not only in the politics department, but from across SOAS. From, so you can also do modules in law, in development studies, as you can see. And then LIST-C provides you with a wide range of modules from within the department and across SOAS. The one thing I do want to say just uh, about this particular degree is that the degree has the Center for Conflicts, Rights and Justice wrapped around the degree. Now, the center provide, the, the degree benefits hugely from having this center because the center hosts events, social media discussions, brings in outside speakers and attendees. So there's a lot of networking opportunity. There's a lot of connection opportunity as a result of the way in which the center is structured around the degree. Over the years, we've had book launches, talks by senior figures, uh, conferences, and so on. We also have a student-led blog titled Reimagining Peace and Justice that I highly recommend you look at. I also encourage you to follow the Center for Conflicts, Rights and Justice or the Reimagining Peace and Justice blog on our various social media platforms. We're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on LinkedIn, we're on Twitter. So, you know, your social media platform of choice, we're probably there and you can follow us. Student participation is key to the success of the center. So each year we ask for people from the cohort, students from the cohort to apply to be graduate researchers, research associates who take on responsibility for the blog, for writing policy briefs, who engage in ongoing research projects and so on. So if you choose to apply to this degree, you'll have an opportunity to learn about the subjects you're interested in, but also to engage practically in policy discussions on those topics. I wanna just say a few words about practicalities before I wrap up. The first is if you have any questions about administrative procedures and rules, please talk to the admissions team because they're best placed to know what the latest rules are and what the most up-to-date information is. However, if you have queries about the content and teaching on this degree, then feel free to get in touch with me. I'm more than happy to talk about your personal statement or if you have any questions, um, that we take students not only from those who have a politics or social science background, but also those who have other relevant backgrounds. And if you fall into one of those categories, don't try and second guess whether your background is relevant. Get in touch with us and we're more than happy to talk to you about it and help you work through it and think about how you frame your uh, personal statement and so on. So if you share our intellectual interest in conflicts, rights and or justice, then talk to me about it. Thank you, Bhavna. Thank you, Vino. Uh, our next uh, speaker will be Dr. Yanan Song, who will talk about the uh, MA in International Studies and Diplomacy and uh, other related programs. Over to you, Yanan. Thank you, Bhavna. Um, hello, everyone. Again, welcome to this interesting event. I am Yanan Song from the Center for International Studies and Diplomacy. Our center basically offer two main on-campus master programs. One is the MA International Studies and Diplomacy, ISD. The other is the uh, MSC, Global Energy and Climate Policy, GECP. Both of those two programs aim to deliver cross-disciplinary teaching and learning that combines an understanding of key concepts, theories and debates with practical skills training. Well, to be more specific about those two programs, the ISD program is basically designed for those engaged in or planning to embark on a professional career requiring international expertise in government or in not-for-profit, corporate or academic environments. Well, the GECP program is basically for those interested in professional contexts relating to energy and climate policy. For both of those two programs, you will have a chance to choose a combination of modules to meet your own specific professional needs and personal interests. As you can see from the slides, you can choose from various modules ranging from political science, international relations, diplomatic studies to public policy, economics, law, etc. 
Um, can you help maybe move on to the next slide to show, to show the students about the uh, module selection regarding GECP as well? Yeah, that's basically for the GECP uh, program. Um, another interesting feature of our program is that you will also be given an opportunity to participate in a range of extracurricular activities. For example, students on the ISD program may have the opportunity to participate in CISD study tours of Geneva, visiting the United Nations. And students on the GECP program may have the opportunity to participate in study tours of energy and climate related organizations in Paris and in Brussels. We also offer some other study tours, including to New York, uh, Washington in the United States, uh, and also to Ethiopia, etc. Usually, the study tour is going to take place in February or in the summertime. Well, generally speaking, we welcome applications from a wide variety of fields and backgrounds. It is not necessary to have a first degree in a discipline directly related to the program. So if you are interested in studying at the center, we would be very delighted to discuss with you any queries you have, whether in person, on the phone, or by this kind of online um, chatting. So feel free to contact the center director or the program conveners. We're gonna be very much look forward to meeting or e-meeting you sometime in the future. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Yanan. Uh the next speaker would be Dr. Rochna Bajpai, who will talk about the MSc Politics of Asia degree program. What to you? Thank you. Thank you, Bhavna. Um, I hope you can see me and hear me, everyone. Um, I'm Rochna Bajpai. I uh, have uh, been teaching at SOAS for nearly 15 years now. Um, I did my uh, first degree in India, I then uh, did my graduate work at Oxford and then uh, moved to SOAS soon after and my profile is pretty representative of what you will find um, in the department. A lot of us have are multi institutional, we've done degrees in the regions uh, that we teach um, and uh, we've also um, uh, been trained at some of the top uh, universities uh, worldwide and uh, in the UK. Um, so the Politics of Asia degree, which I co-convene with Dr. Michael Bueller, um, is a new degree um, and it's been one of our most successful degrees in recent times in terms of recruitment. Uh, we have um, in the degree two pathways, the East Asia pathway and the South Asia pathway that those of you who've uh, had a chance to look at the website uh, uh, will uh, know of. And the slide that you can see currently is of the East Asia pathway. And I've tried to put there um, in not the best formatted fashion, but I've tried to give you a sense of the colleagues who will be teaching you. So Michael Bueller and um, Tatian Kong, Dr. Michael Buehler and Dr. Tatian Kong are the conveners or co-conveners of this pathway. Um, and um, some of the courses that um, you will teach are uh, going to be taught by uh, Julia Strauss, by Daphit Fell, uh, by Yuka Kobayashi, by Carlo Bonura. So there's a wide range of expertise in this uh, program. And um, that's one key and the first key feature that I wanted to highlight. Basically, there's no other politics of Asia program, I think, in the world uh, that can boast of the range of expertise that we provide uh, in North Asia, in Northeast Asia, in Southeast Asia, in South Asia, um, and Central Asia. So it's uh, pretty unrivaled in its regional scope. It's also um, uh, the second point that I wanted to, uh, uh, to bring up uh, is uh, that it's also uh, a program with a strong disciplinary foundation. So when we revamped it, uh, we introduced two new courses, frameworks of political analysis and methodology, uh, which are compulsory courses for students across um, the program uh, and uh, these 
give you both a common uh, disciplinary base, but also a cohort of students that you will be meeting uh, each week, uh, irrespective of which area of Asia you choose uh, to specialize in. And the third point I wanted to uh, highlight is uh, that like um, uh, other programs, we offer open options, a range of open options. In our case, this includes languages. So you will have the opportunity to learn languages of um, South Asia and uh, Southeast Asia. This year, for instance, we have former members of parliament who are doing uh, this degree, learning Bengali because they have an interest and have worked in Bangladesh. So that's just to give you a sense of what students who uh, have been uh, doing this program uh, choose to do. The South Asia pathway is one which I uh, uh, lead on and co-convene. Um, these are some of the colleagues um, who teach uh, key courses in this program, Dr. Yasser Qureshi, Dr. Ravinash Palival, Dr. Bhavna Dave, Dr. Simona Vitorini. Um, and again, if you choose this pathway, you'll have a range of courses uh, that's listed there. I won't, don't have the time to go um, into the details of the courses. Uh, but the key thing to remember is, A, there's a wide range of choice, both uh, of beyond India and um, uh, within um, uh, India teaching from different perspectives, from IR of South Asia, international relations of South Asia, to domestic politics, to cinema and film. Uh, I hope those of you uh, who are interested in this program know that Asia is basically the largest continent and South Asia is the most populous region. One in every uh, four persons in the world is a South Asianist. Uh, so it is a neglected, but a crucially important and a region of rising um, uh, significance in world politics. Um, and in this program, as well as the East Asia uh, pathway, you can, of course, choose open options. Um, and finally, uh, you can choose, some of our students choose not to specialize in either South Asia or Southeast or, or East Asia, but to do equal number of courses from each. So that is also possible. Um, it, you don't have to, uh, if you're undecided, uh, choose between one or the other. Okay, uh, so that's enough from me now, uh, but I'm happy to take questions in the end. And uh, back to you, Bhavna, thanks. Thank you, Roshna. Uh... Bhavna, I think you're on mute. Sorry. I'm so sorry. The next we have a uh, Professor Ar Arshin Adib Mogadam who will talk about the MSc politics of the Middle East. Thank you very much, Bhavna. I think we are meant to speak for about uh, three minutes. So I will stick to that time. And I'm really looking forward to interact with you uh, directly. So I'll just give you a few signposts without necessarily repeating what was already said by my distinguished colleagues. So the MSc politics of, of the Middle East is very similar to all the other degrees in terms of its flexibility, uh, the global outlook, uh, the composition of, of the staff. Um, we have uh, you know, a long-standing tradition of studying this pivotal region of the world at SOAS. Well, I can easily say, having studied in you know, three or four different countries, um, that you can't get around SOAS when it comes to studying any region. Um, including uh, the Middle East. And when you take a look at the biography of many of the world leaders, you know, there is a bit of SOAS in there. Um, uh, if not in terms of degree, then certainly in terms of visiting fellowships and things like that. This is the case also when it comes to the MSc politics of the Middle East. So flexibility is reflected in, um, you know, the various options that you have. There are compulsory options that are interdisciplinary where you get an overview of the region in terms of its domestic politics and its explosive international relations, of course, and the political economy. Everything that happens in that region is intimately linked to what happens here, especially in London, not only in terms of our sort of multicultural links to the region, but uh, certainly also in terms of some of the, you know, rather disastrous wars that um, you know, happened um, with our involvement. So we study the causes of these events, we study why they happened, what the repercussions are, 
um, and you know, the composition of the degree reflects that wide ranging approach. So you have the list B with the core components, um, you know, again, not very different from the other degrees interdisciplinary um, with, you know, elements of, of domestic politics, international relations, political economy, uh, and a bit of artificial intelligence in there um, as well, but not artificial intelligence in the kind of Eurocentric approach that uh, Bhavna already kind of uh, unearthed and tried to challenge. Uh, but you know, what are the discourses of artificial intelligence, some of the other things from beyond? So we always try to look at, um, you know, the, the viewpoint of um, others, and in particular, of course, intellectuals, academic scholars um, in the so-called Middle East. And then there are several uh, guided options. And of course, again, in terms of the depth of SOAS, you can study languages, right? Arabic, Persian, Turkish, whatever language you fancy that is, uh, you, you know, characteristic of this region, you can do it at SOAS, and you can't do it at some of the other institutions. This is why uh, this degree has been I believe one of the most prominent and largest MSc um, sort of master's Middle East degrees um, in the world. Um, next slide, please, Babla. So you have my wonderful colleagues who are all um, very prominent academics and scholars of the region, Professor Sawa Ismail, Dr. Reem Abu El Fadel, and Dr. Sara El Kazas, all of them publishing. Um, uh, on Egypt, on Turkey, on, uh, you know, my humble self, Iran, um, on, you know, urbanity. Um, and then, of course, you have this beautiful um, atmosphere in London um, with all these wonderful institutions surrounding SOAS that all offer um, various events on this region of the world. And then you have our SOAS unions, who are particularly um, you know, in a positive way agitated whenever something happens in the region. So, you know, SOAS is the place to be if you want to be as close as possible to the events in this uh, region. We also house the um, Cambridge University Press book series, The Global Middle East, as you can see, um, you know, Reem um, published, some of the other colleagues published as part of this um, book series. But, you know, we have published with all the major university presses, Savo Ismail's, um, you know, pivotal book on Syria, um, you know, we have published with the, with the major university presses in the world. So you'll be very well cared for. Um, please reach out um, and, you know, talk to us about whatever you would like to. I'll be personally very happy to answer all your questions. And on to you, Bhavna. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Arshin. And finally, we have our colleague, Dr. Manjit Ramgotra, who will talk about the Political Thought MSc program. Manjit. You're on mute, Manjit. Thank you. Um, Good morning, everyone, and uh, it's a real pleasure to be here and to meet you virtually. My name is Manjeet Ramgotra, and I teach political theory in the department. Um, so I'm really excited to tell you about our program that has been developing more and more over the last few years. Um, St studying political thought at SOAS is quite a unique experience because our approach to political theory um, tends to be um, more of a comparative one. So what do I mean by that? The uh, study of political theory at SOAS doesn't relate uniquely to the Western canon of great thinkers. We do study some of them, but actually what it does is it goes beyond those borders and it looks at political theory as articulated in different places by different peoples and through um, different movements in the world. Um, could you go back to the previous slide, please? Thank you. Um, yeah, so we look beyond borders and uh, we study political theory as articulated in different parts of the world. Um, and this is also um, indicated in some of the options that you can take, such as um, African political thought. There's also, of course, an Indian political thought. 
our core modules or the compulsory ones rather are political theory, race and empire, which is a course that looks at post colonialism, but also uh, studies race and empire and it's taught by uh, my colleague Hagar Kotef, who is the director of our Center for Research, um, the Center for Comparative Political Theory and an expert on um, settler colonialism, as well as on Hobbes and Locke and uh, restrictions to movement. Um, the other core, core compulsory course is approaches to comparative political thought. And it is in this course where we start to compare political theory across borders. And we look at the methodologies through which we can do this. Um, and then we start to introduce thinkers from different parts of the world, such as Mbembe in Africa, um, uh, et cetera. And the third course, which is a new one, um, is reading and writing political theory. And this is a unique course, as the other two are as well. But this one in particular is a course that will be is designed to support students in um, conceptualizing their dissertations and also um, in in writing a dissertation that is theory focused. And it's going to be constructed through some short seminars of a couple of hours each and two full day workshops that are just for students working in political theory so that you can work together and support each other um, in writing about political theory. Um, and we'll also have some other activities related to research and writing through that course, as well as the center. Um, and then we have some other courses in political theory, such as culture and difference in political theory, um, political theory and global crises. So as you can see, the, the scope goes beyond um, what is normally taught in political theory degrees. Um, I just want to stress that we also have um, the Center for Comparative Political Thought, where we have a research, uh, sorry, a reading group, as well as um, seminars and talks given by politi uh, political theorists from across the world. Um, and, and we would very much encourage you to be involved in this and also to take part in the reading group, which we want to have as um, more student led than, than led by the, the center. So um, yeah, we will be, we are developing um, relations across it. Our, our department in political theory is growing and um, in January we welcome um, Professor Inche from, um, who's currently at Singapore. Um, we have myself, um, another expert called Alexi Albrecht, Albrecht in political theory and people like Rochna Bajpai and Carla Bonura, as well as Dr., uh, sorry, Professor Stephen Chan, who also have regional expertise as well as expertise in political theory. So it's this unique combination of people who are political theorists, but they're also experts in different regions across the world um, that come together and make this a really unique degree. So I look forward to answering any questions that you might have later on. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Manjeet. Uh, and we had uh, our colleague Stephen Chan, who was going to talk about international politics and African politics, had some technical difficulties getting on this. So my colleague Arshin, uh, Professor Arshin Adepogadam, has kindly offered to talk very briefly about the international politics program. So I will hand over to Arshin, and then we want to make sure that we have about 15, 20 minutes for your Q&A. So Arshin, I'm just moving to the slides. And if you can say a few words, please. Thank you, Bhavna. Um, I mean, as, as indicated before, really everything we said applies obviously to uh, the MSc International Politics degree as well, which I convened um, a few times, including last year. Um, it's one of the largest degrees um, at SOAS. So you will be embedded in a wonderful cohort of students from all over the world. 
right? So, you know, that in itself has, of course, pedagogical value, educational value, um, because, you know, of the networks that you, that you create, some of them lifelong. I mean, um, as, you know, Rachna said, I've been teaching at, at SOAS for 15 years as well. And, you know, I'm still in contact with some of the students from 15 years ago. Um, and they have these wonderful careers all over the world. So what we have truly is a network of SOASians who uh, keep in contact, benefit from those contacts, not only in terms of, you know, socializing and when you go to different towns, <laughs> you go to see a SOASian and you, you get happy and you, you know, hang out, that's important in and of itself. Certainly there's a lot of hanging out at, at SOAS. Um, and, but, you know, also because of the kind of, you know, uh, networks that you forge that are beneficial for jobs and things like that. And the MSc International Politics is at, at the heart of that, I would say, simply because of um, the numbers of students that we get for this degree. And when you study international relations at SOAS, you truly study the globe, the world, as Bavna said, you know, it's not international Western studies, which is the case, I have to say, in most if not all IR degrees, um, in you know that I know at least and that I've encountered and that I've even spoken at uh, various conferences but here at SOS I, I can vouch for you really study the world so you have again the same structure you know compulsory courses obviously international theory methodology you know how do we analyze the world right how can we understand what is happening this is important the how questions must be important for a postgraduate um, degree as much as the why question, but you need to know how as much in you know academic life as in personal life in order to know why. And then you have list B, the core courses from policy analysis. No surprises here: international political economy, politics of global security, and uh, further on, you know the various regional options. Again, something unique about the IR degree at SOAS, you have the regions, right? You can pick and choose. You can, you know get a little bit of the Middle East, get a little bit of Asia, and you know, maybe throw some Africa in there, all possible within that degree. And then beyond that, um, you know, even further afield beyond the department um, and even intercollegiate, you could even you know, get some um, smaller units from, from some of the other colleges of the University of London. Some of the, again, unique things about us is that we are part of this vast network. Um, and then with the dissertation, you get the perfect opportunity to work with the academic scholar that you would want to work with for a one-to-one -one situation, two or three months on the topic that you would love to research further. Thank you, Bhavna. I think um, we, can, we can have the question answered. Yes, uh, thank you, Arshin. Just finally, I would ask students interested in Africa to write to the program convener, uh, Dr. Al Alistair Fraser with any questions or just direct your in, uh, questions inquiry to me. So now we have time for your questions, uh, clarifications. So please write in chat or if you're able to speak, then please feel free to do so. I'm going to stop sharing the screen. We'd love to know what your interests are, what brings you uh, to our open day um, and what sorts of questions you still have at the end of all the information that you've been bombarded with uh, from our end. So please do speak up. Uh, um, don't worry about if you think the question is too small or um, if you think uh, it can be addressed on the website. It's fine still to talk uh, to us about it. So don't be shy. And Christina wants to say something. Hi, sorry, can you hear me? Okay, great. Um, I just had a quick question. So I was in the um the webinar just before this for the um the Department of um, East Asia Studies, I believe, and I was listening to um their talk um for the degree. Um, I'm particularly interested in Chinese studies, so I was looking at their um MA Chinese studies. Um, however, listening to the talk here, 
um, it sounds as though I'm probably um, uh, what I'm actually interested in is the is the MSC politics of Asia and looking at that East Asia pathway. Um, I was just wondering in the in that that previous talk they were talking about how there's the option for um, study abroad. From what it sounds like, it doesn't look like there's a lot of room um, in the MSC politics of Asia for that. But I just wanted to confirm that that um, yeah whether that that was an option or, or not so much. Thanks. You're right, um, absolutely, Christina. That's a really good question. Uh, in fact, we are um, looking into this, but that is one thing which distinguishes um, some of the MSCs we do from those that other departments um, offer at SOAS. Uh, we don't have a built-in sort of study abroad uh, uh, component uh, because as you can see, the credit uh, requirements are um, uh, be, uh, get filled up with the combination of disciplinary training. Um, so we've tried to balance uh, both disciplinary training, but then also a sufficient range of regional courses. And that means that we had to, um, if, if you like, sacrifice that, but that is something we're looking into. We do though offer the language option, which the other um, departments, the other regional departments offer. So you should be able to do that. And um, I mean, um, obviously it's up to you to choose which uh, program best suits your needs. Uh, but we have had uh, people in the past who've, including this year, who've moved from, say, the regional South Asia or East Asia to our programs because um, they find um, that they are able to pursue a, a wider, um, as wide a range of uh, certainly options in um, the regional courses, as well as getting a disciplinary cohort uh, uh, training. Um, so, so, yeah. And we're also looking in this um, um, in this master's program at internships for students. So I'm actually in conversation at the moment with uh, colleagues uh, to try and have paid internships that are linked um, as well to to the politics of Asia program. So that's another area to look out for. Amazing, thank you. If if I might just quickly tack in there, um, just another question. Well, well, I've sure. got you. Um, so if I if um because my background um, is um, I just sort of completed my bachelor's in politics and international relations. And um, if it is specifically um, that political side of the Chinese studies um, aspect that I'm interested in, um, would you kind of just sort of, I, I appreciate it's probably a big question, there's more to it, but would you advise this? This seems as though that's kind of more tailored than. Yeah, um, I think so. And we yeah, have, as I course. said, we've had as conveners experience of students moving from the regional uh, to this for those who are more interested yep. in the politics side. And that's what they've said, that we came to do a general degree at SOAS, but we find we're more interested in the politics side of it. And, um, and because, as you know, the department from my colleagues uh, talks offers really a wide uh, range of other very attractive uh, center and um, um, disciplinary, uh, uh, as well as regional options that you can take as options. There, there are many students who choose to move to us for that reason. So I would, I would strongly encourage you to do it because the one thing that it does make a difference too, I mean, of course, we are very flexible like all other, uh, at, uh, programs at SOAS, but uh, departmental students then have a priority in um, module sign up in there are sometimes caps, for example, in um, if, if there are uh, too many students. And so it does make sense to choose um, a department where um, most of the courses are the ones that you want to take, basically. Does that, okay, I'm, I'm not sure I phrased that entirely correctly, but, uh, but that's what No, no, that's about. perfect. Yeah, that's great. That's yeah. really helpful. Thanks. Thanks very much for that. Uh, let me just read out a question by Jesse about uh, asking for distinction, uh, difference between uh, the Masters in International uh, Studies and Diplomacy and MSc International Politics. So if colleagues teaching these modules can Ravna, respond. Sorry to interrupt. I replied to the message Thank already. You. So. Okay, great. Thank you. Can I, can I probably add something regarding um, this to Jesse's question, please. Yeah, my feeling is probably similar to Vino's answer um, in the chatting box. Um, the uh, international politics program might require the students to have, you know, kind of academic background in political science, international relations, etc. But for the MAISD, 
Uh, we, as I mentioned earlier, we welcome applications from a wide variety of fields and backgrounds, and it's not necessary to have a first degree in this discipline directly related to the program. And more specifically, the MAASD is designed to be very practical. We want to give our students a clearer picture of what you will do or end up with after taking over programs. So this is particularly useful for thinking about and planning your career at height of time. So the important feature of our program is that we not only offer on-campus teaching and learning, but also uh, offer some kind of practical skills training and extracurricular activities. So for example, we also invite serving and former diplomats and NGO experts to train students with skills on, for example, diplomatic practice. So this is probably you know, the, the difference that I wanted to address regarding those two on-campus master programs. And I hope that's gonna be useful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hello, I have a question, if possible. Yes. I think it's, it's going to be a general question, but um, how can we may meet advisors or find advisors uh, for our master's degree? I'm sorry, I didn't. Ah, hear. you didn't hear me? Okay, so my question is, uh, how can we find the suitable advisors for our uh, MA degrees? Uh, for example, if we do, if we want to, to have a thesis at the end of the second year, or I don't know, how much uh, the duration of the MA degrees, if it's uh, two years or one year? Uh, yes, good question. Uh, when Once you are enrolling the master's program, we will guide you through the uh, process of dissertation writing, supervision, advising. So all, um, so all those things will take, uh, take place. And normally by, by December, you have to finalize your dissertation topic. Of course, you can change it and, and the supervision, you indicate your preference. So uh, you, can, uh, you can select who you want to work with and we do our best to ensure that you are able to get supervision from the person who you requested. So all through, you will be guided in the process. Okay, and as for the average uh, scholarship, and everything so you're not you you're not may i think the title we need to make a connection with the administration for the dissertation title no uh, you... no i mean i mean if we, for the average which the, the requirements say for applying for these programs ma program degrees so which uh, how much the the average is going to be um if you have scholarship uh, all the applications so i need i to... think this yeah, the scholarship, uh, there are very few scholarships that SOAS award. So we ask students to look for all other alternatives. And I think it's best to contact the scholarship office and the administration. Yes, we can advise you about the academic uh, aspects and teaching and degree program. Uh -huh. And also the average and all the requirements. All those things you you can write with your specific details. You can write to one of us uh, and also write to the administration. But I'll be happy to respond to your specific request if you can send me the the specific details. Yeah, of course I will. Send okay. You. May I quickly jump in, right, just to add to what Bhavna said, which is really useful. Yeah, the admissions and the scholarships um, offices have their own emails, and they uh, you should uh, have access to those. So if you uh, direct administrative queries to them. Um, but in addition to the dissertation advisor, the uh, convener of your uh, MSc, so for instance, for the Middle East, it's Arshin, or for politics of Asia, it's myself and Michael. We also serve as advisors in, in the sense of um, helping you choose courses, uh, but also uh, yeah, to design your degree. So if, if you're thinking, if your question was about pastoral advice or advice about beyond the dissertation, then that is usually provided by uh, the conveners of the respective degrees. So that's another uh, source of advice, as well as the postgraduate convener, that's currently Bhavna, and um, next term, uh, yeah, would be uh, my colleague, Dr. Fell. Thank you. 
the final question I by Ivy. I don't know if oh, colleagues answered that question. A couple of hands up. Yes. Vidi has her hand up and someone. Yes. Uh, is it okay if I go ahead? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so my question is, um, what are the key or important uh, aspects and factors you all are looking for in an SOP? Can, can you repeat the question? Yeah. I didn't quite get it. Yeah. What are some important factors and aspects you all are looking for for a preferred student in a statement of purpose? Okay, I will just briefly say, and my colleagues can add to it. There is no uh, standard expectation as such. Your statement of purpose should reveal to us what are you interested in? Why are you interested in that? Uh, what uh, background, if any, you have in that or why you want to acquire uh, further knowledge. It should tell us uh, something about you as a person and, and also about what you have done and your motivation. So each person has uh, their own specific reasons. So there is no kind of a standard uh, such policy as such. It also requires you to be uh, authentic and, and also uh, share what is it that you want to do. And again, you can write to us if you have specific questions we can give. We can't comment on your statement of purpose, but we may be able to provide you certain guidelines once you write uh, uh, ask us with uh, some specific uh, okay, questions. Yeah, thank you. Hello, yeah, I, I had a similar question, um, which obviously that's been answered. I was also wondering though, do the sort of course tutors, do you all look at the statement of purpose um, or is it sort of decided by a separate admissions department? We look at all those things exactly. So some of the your marks and other things they may be looked upon by the, the by the central the administration offices but what you have written in text about yourself is something that is read uh, looked upon by the specific program conveners and and number of uh, the relevant other colleagues as well so it's very important what you write there but exactly as bhavna said um, if i may very quickly that you need um, it's of course you know that there's a general two one sort of requirement, but they what distinguishes us is that because we take the statements seriously, uh, we do look at borderline cases. So if you've not met uh, the two one equivalent, do still apply if you feel uh, that you have, for instance, relevant work experience. Put that into the statement of purpose. Um, and do tell us why you particularly want to come to SOAS or uh, to the degree, because say for international politics or political thought, there are many places where you can do these degrees. And we are always interested in knowing why the students would choose, would seek to uh, come to us uh, in particular. Uh, and as I said, relevant work experience is always uh, good to put in as well. So what distinguishes us is we do take each applicant seriously and application seriously and not just apply a mechanical cutoff of a 2-1, which many um, sort of places do. <clears throat> Are there other questions? Uh, where can we find your emails? On the on the politics and international uh, uh, studies, the website, ah. and you will easily find under each person's name. And otherwise, any inquiries, the simple thing is pgpolitics at soas.acuk is one thing, and my own email, bd4 at soas.acuk. So if you're struggling to find the right person, send it to me, and I can forward it to the uh, relevant people. Mm. Can you repeat it again or write to me in the- I just put it in the chat. Okay, yeah. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, Bhavna, just Sorry, can quickly, I there's a couple of questions in the chat about yes. PhD programs, admission um, application deadlines. I think the admissions team is better placed to answer those questions. So can I advise you to come along? There's one a couple of hours from now, I think there's another 
uh, session like this where the admissions team is running that session, I would advise that you go to that session and ask those types of questions because they'd be better placed to answer it than we are. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, sorry to interrupt. Is it possible for me to direct a question to Professor Arshi? Um, okay, so, yeah, very quickly. So I come from a background of international relations and I briefly um, specialize in the region of the Middle East and North Africa, and I'm looking to explore that region further through the programs that you guys um, offer at SOAS that I find very, very interesting. Um, and I'm looking at two in particular. I'm looking at um, politics of the Middle East masters, but I'm also looking at the Middle Eastern studies masters. And I was uh, just, I wanted to ask about the main differences because I know they're in different departments and I have yet to um, go to the session um, of that department. So if you could just briefly tell me the main distinguishing factors, um, I would really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mazara. This is a, a very pertinent question. It comes up um, very often. I've, I've actually replied to emails about this as well. So as you rightly said, the other degree is um, based at a different department, which comes with a more kind of humanities, cultural studies focus, um, whereas we are probably uh, more socially, scientifically rooted um, which means that you know we look at kind of political dynamics uh, more than than they would do. Um, you would also be at a slightly different department in terms of the availability of courses. So I would recommend that you look at the degree structure and see what options you have, and then you would um, probably you know for some courses also click on you know the structure which is all available online and then you would see the contents and the the differences will become clearer in general it's that difference but then in particular um you know a little bit of clicking here and there would give you more and then of course you know just reach out drop me an email and we could also talk on zoom if you like you know or you know uh, via email no problem at all thank you so much thank you Thank you. I guess do, we have to end this meeting because we have gone about the time. So any further questions, please uh, send them, send us emails. Thank you, everyone. Sorry, is anyone trying to say something? Okay. Otherwise, uh, thank you, everyone, and hope to see you at SOAS next year. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for coming. Thanks for Thanks. Great stuff. Thanks. Good to see everyone.